Hey, what's up coders? In this Python tutorial, you're going to learn how to combine multiple Seaborn or matplotlib charts easily. So if you have ever had to combine multiple matplotlib charts, you would know that you have to define the layout before even you make charts. But that is not how we work, right? So sometimes we make charts and we want to combine those charts. Maybe you have got like four charts, you want to present it with a nice layout, but you wouldn't be able to do that without a library that is like patchwork. So patchwork lib is the library name. It, it I think it borrows its name from a similar R library called patchwork. Yeah, I think, I think that's what the developer has said. So this patchwork lib works with Seaborn and matplotlib charts where you can very simply easily combine multiple Seaborn or matplotlib chart just by simply using two notations. You can either use this or you can use this. These operators will help you either horizontally combine charts or vertically combine charts. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you on a Kaggle notebook how to do the same thing. So let's get started. All we have to do is start by installing patchwork. I've got a Kaggle notebook. I've got it with the latest competition data set. So we have a data set for us to work with. The first step is pip install patchwork. I'm quietly installing it because I don't want to flood your screen with a lot of commands where every single library is getting installed. The first step pip install patchwork lib. After you install patchwork lib, make sure that you import pandas if you are going to use any data manipulation, seaborn for making charts, pyplot mat from matplot you want to get pyplot for you to make the plots visible and also save the figure. So after I import that now I've got mat import patchwork lib as pw. You can import it with any alias. I'm importing it with pw. Let me quickly run this and see if it is loaded. Yes, and then read the input data set from Kaggle. So I've got the training data set and I'm just simply looking at the data set what's happening. So we've got multiple columns. We have got a discourse ID, discourse start. I'm not entirely familiar with this competition. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to create a new column and I'm going to call it uh, train of discourse duration. I don't, I don't even know if it is time. It's just there are, there are two continuous variables. I'm going to use that to say discourse start in minus train of discourse start. Okay, so I'm creating a new column. And after I create this new column, if I do train head, you should probably able to see the latest column, you can see the discourse duration. So now what we might want to do is we might want to start using this and create multiple charts. Maybe for this demo, I'm going to show starting with two charts. Um, let's see how much time it takes. And based on that, we can we can make more charts. So the first step for us to make a chart is you have to first create a brick object. So how are we going to create a brick object? So let me even write this. A lot of people usually complain about the way I speak English. So maybe it's better for me to say brick object. First step is to create a brick object. Okay. So the first step is to create a brick object and the brick object is usually like your access object. So I'm going to call it access one or you can call it anything that you want, but I'm going to simply call it access one and let me, let me get this up. So I'm going to call it access one equals PW because that's where we are getting the brick object brick off and you need to give a label that is unique. So I'm going to make a scatter plot. So I'm going to call it scatter or you can simply call it AX1. That's that's much easier. Come on. What is the figure size that you want? So I'm going to give a figure size of maybe something like, you know, three, three by two. Um, so that would that would help me have the figure size in mind. So I've got the access one, the brick object created. Now go ahead and create your chart, whatever you want to do. Let's say I want to create a scatter plot. I want to create a scatter plot data equals train x equals um, discourse n and y equals discourse start discourse start so we have got a scatter plot here at this point we have got a scatter plot here so now we are going to use the scatter plot like if you want to set a title you can do that um, but but um, like whatever you want to do basically with the scatter plot you can do that i'm going to just simply show you how to create a title i'm going to say set title um scatter relation relations relationship between 
discourse start and end so that's my scatterplot title i've got the scatterplot title next we need multiple charts right that's the whole point of this video where i'm going to teach you to combine multiple charts so let's get started with the second chart which means you need to create the second brick object so i'm going to create the second brick object and the second brick object ax2 the second axis and two and i'm going to keep stick to the same size three by two so maybe or maybe you know what i'm going to do four by two okay so i've got four by two and the second one i want to make let's say histogram his plot data equals train and uh, x equals what is the one that we created i think we created something called discourse duration so i'm going to make a histogram of discourse duration let me create this i've got the histogram of discourse duration and i'm going to say x2 dot set title i'm going to say distribution of discourse discourse duration so i've got the title set so at this point i've got two chart just to quickly show i'm going to make a third chart so that i think it be easier for us to for us to understand so the third chart um could be so we have got a categorical column so maybe the third chart i can use this column so discourse type let's see and uh, we can we can you know try to make something related to discourse duration so i've got the third plot which is ax3 equals pw dot break of ax3 which is to you know create a new brick object fix size maybe i don't know maybe i should still stick to maybe 4 by 3 something new and sns dot bar plot data equals train x equals what did i what is the column name that i just saw discourse type after we have discourse type then y equals y equals discourse duration where is the discourse duration discourse duration not sure if the plot would happen okay it happened cool okay maybe i have to swap the y and x axis so that it doesn't look bad with the labels yes so at this point we have got three charts the third chart again i want to give the title ax3 dot set title and what is the title i want to say i want to say um lead discourse type discourse type and their duration ha. again i don't know whether that is duration but i'm just going with that so at this point we have got three charts x1 x2 x3 so how are we going to connect this let's say first i want to simply horizontally append everything okay so i want to combine all the charts horizontally so if that is the case i'm going to create one called ax underscore h okay or maybe the right name would be x underscore h of one two three so equals x1 pipe x2 pipe x3 so i'm trying to horizontally connect all the charts and after i do that get the chart and say fig and then oh that is quite bad why don't we have all the charts here let me quickly check okay so this is a terrible mistake from my side because every time you made a chart i did assign this chart to that particular axis or the brick object so you can see that every time i made a chart the chart was there but the axis is empty so what i'm going to go do now is for every plot that i created i'm going to say this should go with x1 okay and uh, now i can say this should go where this this should go with x2 okay and finally this should go with i think you all understand what is the mistake that i did when i created this chart i was ideally supposed to assign this to that brick object or axis that we created but i didn't do that so now i'm going to again create this and create say fig ideally at this point we have got all the charts horizontally stacked we have got the first chart second chart third chart so very basic stuff let's say we want to stack them vertically i'm going to copy this paste this here and then say vertically i'm going to stack them so i'm going to use the slash operator so i want to say slash so which means i'm going to stack all the charts vertically so let me create that and have it here and then save fig I think I should probably add some comments saying that stack the charts, stack the charts horizontally. Okay. And here stack the charts vertically, stack the charts, stack the charts 
vertically okay but you know not every time you want to stack them everything horizontally not every time you want to stack everything vertically as well what if you want to keep one chart you know just as it is and two charts in the second assume that you've got two columns in the first column you want one chart in the second column you want let's say two charts like vertically stacked so i'm going to do that now i'm going to say ax horizontal and I'm, i might say you know um one maybe the third one is and you know it could be any name right um th vertical third one and uh, one two horizontal i think i'm messing up with my naming so i'm going to keep ax3 and then i'm going to horizontally stack ax1 slash ax2 so what i'm trying to do here i'm going to have ax3 the third chart the first position like the first column and in the second column i'm going to have two charts like vertically aligned let's see if it works out that's what i hope this does but um, you know just like you saw how my demo failed let's see if it does the same thing okay good i succeeded in what i set out to do so i've got the first chart here and then i've got the two charts vertically aligned vertically stacked i can do the same thing slightly differently maybe instead of this i can say i i want two charts here i want the third chart to be to be vertically stacked okay so i'm going to say two pipe this and i'm going to maybe slightly change the name so that i don't overwrite the same one it doesn't matter because it's i'm not submitting this um for any competition or anything but you can see but you can see that i've got oh i, I messed up with the name that i created and you can see that i've got i've got distribution here and i've got two charts if i want to change it instead of ax1 i can keep ax2 here and then change the same thing again so that your scatter plot becomes the bigger one and then you have got other two charts you can play around with this you can add multiple charts to this like as you can see the demo that is available here you can you can add all the charts and again you can play with where do you want to keep your legend if you want to keep your legend if you don't want to keep your legend you can have multiple themes one organization theme you can you can do a lot of things here and that is a flexibility that patchwork lib gives you where you don't have to necessarily use a simple layout function before you start creating the chart but also you can uh, you can use this library and create these charts while you are working on this analysis so that you know you have a better way to represent how this chart should be displayed what chart should be big what chart should be small so you have this complete freedom of how you want to present your eda or analysis i hope this this library would be extremely useful for people who are working in academia for people who do a lot of data analysis using python and and also you know people people like who participate in kaggle competition if you want to show something themed together you can use patchwork lib to combine multiple seaborn and matplotlib charts very very easily as you can see that we just played around with this layouts after we created the chart with very easy simple pipe operator and slash operator and i hope that is what is going to make this library super popular i hope this video was helpful to you i would link the i would link this kaggle notebook in the youtube description and i would also link the github repository in the youtube description all you can do is go ahead and then star this repository that would mean a lot to the developer if they are open for sponsorship or any kind of support you can do it but simply at least give a star and give a shout out to the developer on social media and also if you want to use my kaggle notebook i link the kaggle note notebook in the youtube description all you have to do is copy and edit and then run all the cells it should ideally work just make sure that the library is installed and you have internet you have internet switched on on your kaggle notebook but other than that i think everything should ideally work without any problem i hope this video was helpful to you thank you so much for listening to me see you in the next video happy coding peace